Hello everyone and welcome to this latest episode of the Tea Break. I'm Varun and this is where we talk about most things cricket. And today we're going to talk about the second test match between India and England. Today was day 4 and the game finished rather quickly as expected. The series is now tied at one all and extremely well set up for the next two games at Ahmedabad. They start in a week's time from today. I was actually wondering, you know, what what Bollywood movie could this match actually represent? So there are multiple types of Bollywood movies, but one of the most common types is the rag to riches story where uh, everyone's going through high drama and finally the hero comes out on top. But this doesn't really represent that. I thought this sort of feels like this Salman Khan or Akshay Kumar movie where you turn on the first scene, you look at these guys walk in and you think, yeah, I, I know how this is going to end. This is going to end with some with a brutal bashing of the opponent. And that's pretty much what happened. Uh, and the, the the script was pretty much written during the first scene of this test match when Rohit Sharma got 80 in the first session and when the ball started turning from day 1. you pretty much knew how this was going to go and, and and that's what happened at the end of the day england lost by over 300 runs a very very heavy defeat in the test match one thing that was different though from the single star cast movies and what was very positive for india i thought is the number of contributors in this game now you you think of typical games where you have favorable conditions for the home side for example a recent one between pakistan and australia when pakistan visited australia and warner and labishain scored 300 and 200 odd between them and the game was over uh, b- but that wasn't again the case this time right if you look at the whole team and you think about okay who all stood out for you in this test match from the india perspective you can clearly name a lot of people there was rohit sharma with 160 there was ashwin with 100 and excellent bowling figures There was Kohli, Rahane, and Pant all scoring half centuries. There was Akshar Patel uh, getting a five-wicket haul in the second innings, and there was Pant again. And I mentioned him twice purely because of his wicket-keeping skills. So, out of the eleven, and then of course Ishan Sharma got going with a couple of wickets in the first innings. Kuldeep Yadav got going with a couple of wickets at the end in the second innings. So, around. 9 to 10 people out of the 11 actually contributed to this win and that was extremely extremely positive for india going forward as well and that's something we've seen now over the australia tour as well that everyone stands up so in that sense this was quite special even though the conditions were very favorable Th- and that's where i think there there was a gap between india and england okay england lost uh, purely because of the skill but if you look at even their performance not too many names stand up at all it, it was not a team performance and it was only moin ali uh, who stands out jack leach who stands out you think okay four wickets uh, moin ali got eight in the test match jack leach got four and three i think in the two innings and ben folk stands out because of his wicket keeping skills and 40 odd in the first innings other than that no one really contributed for england and that's where that's where i think the big difference was between uh, the two sides Today I was quite happy with with the way England approached. I'm not I, I don't find they lost the game and they got out cheaply but the way they got out I thought was fine. Dan Lawrence was trying to be positive. He was coming down the wicket and got stumped. A few other batsmen went for the sweep shot, got caught. But on a slightly flatter wicket, those exact same shots can go for four. They were showing intent, they were showing aggression, they wanted to land a few punches as we spoke about yesterday. Not successful, but they tried. Uh, to do that and that's what i thought was a bit of a positive side from the england team they didn't just roll over trying to push and prod uh, like they did in the first innings which was which was very disappointing so i think overall just like i mentioned a steam roll by india it was pretty obvious this was going to happen and we are well set up now for the next two test matches um, it was one of the biggest positives for cricket in india was that we have crowds back in uh, i would be happier if they do wear masks but uh, there was hardly any social distancing in place but the crowds did make a big impact uh, you could see especially on the first uh, in the first innings when kuldeep yadav came on to bowl the whole crowd was cheering for him because they know that it, it was a big moment for him two years out of the side coming back into the side and given only four or five overs but everyone was cheering for him i think that must have given him a lot of confidence ashwin was treated like pretty much a demigod uh, in chennai and and he probably is the way he is performing at the moment i think he is uh, a, a 
Virat Kohli mentioned Ajinkya Rahane as a high impact player. I think Ashwin is just the highest impact player at the moment across uh, the test cricket format. There I agree, agree with a lot of uh, pundits that he should be made into a specialist test format player to prolong his career and uh, India's victories going forward as well. From the England perspective, I think the rotation policy can be criticized now because it's, it, it just d- doesn't work. If you keep changing five players every test match, there's not going to be that consistency that you're going to get. Now, in the third test, let's see what they go with. I think there'll be another four or five changes, but that's for, that's for later. So, not a lot to discuss about today. The match ended pretty quickly, but like I mentioned, uh, clear positives for India. Not too many that you can pick out for England from this test, uh, but hopefully they do show up well in the next next game. The next test is a pink ball test. I've always mentioned that uh, ping ball is a totally different format it's not so there's a white ball format which is the one day international t20 and there's a red ball which is a test cricket but the ping ball format is a different one because you never know what's going to happen you never know if the ball is going to swing you you don't know if it's going to turn and you don't know how the players are going to spot the ball in the lights and how the match is going to go so it's a 50 50 which is which makes the series even more interesting because i think if india get on top early in the next game then it's series over because I think they will win the fourth test at Ahmedabad, uh, which is normally a turning wicket. Uh, it's a new stadium. The whole, uh, whatever seating was allowed has been sold out is the, is the latest news, which is great again. So there'll be a lot of people in the stadium supporting uh, the team and it's going to be a, it's going to be a spectacle. Also, because it's a day-night test, it gives me a chance to wake up on time uh, and watch the game and not wake up at 3.45 a.m., which is a big positive uh, for me as well. So I spoke about all positives for India. Like I said, not too many for England, but hopefully they give a good fight in the next game and we have a tight contest because that's ultimately that's what you that's what you want to see in, in, in cricket. You don't want to see one-sided games. It's not fun even if your team is winning. So I will catch up with you soon. I'll make some videos on, on the IPL after the auction, but till then... Goodbye.